Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. Today we will be making this little bundled bunny. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. To make the pattern for the bunny, I started with a six inch square cut from graph paper. I folded it in half and I just um, marked out five squares. So that's one and a quarter inches so when doubled, it would be two and a half. And I drew a line up straight up the trunk for three inches, and then I just curved it out to meet the point. And of course, these are the ears that we gather like this. And then this is the face and the body. To make this little bundled bunny, we'll start with some cotton knit. This is just a t-shirt knit and it's doubled over, folded over. I've chosen this sort of a cream color, but white is nice, you can make it any color. Whatever kind of a cotton knit that you can find, you could use. And I'm just gonna pin it and cut out both layers. Here are my pattern pieces, and now I'll put them right sides together and stitch around the edge all the way around, leaving an opening in the bottom. This is sewn all the way around the edge with the opening in the bottom, but before I turn it, I'm going to uh, trim the seam allowance, trim off these corners, and maybe clip a little bit into the, into the curves. Um, I just use a regular straight stitch. I clipped and turned this to the right side, and now I'm going to fold this in half just to determine the center. Let's call this the center and draw a line. They don't have to be perfect and they don't have to be the same, like this. You might not be able to see this, it's pretty light, let's see. I live in the Arizona desert and pens just dry out <laughs> immediately. So now I have a double strand of quilting thread and I'm going to gather up along these lines. From here, up, secure, and from here down and secure. And this is going to gather up the little ears. That's where we're going. I'll start here. And like I say, these, the ears do not have to be identical. So don't really worry about, oh, exactly how far down is this and how far down is that. I think it's actually a little bit cuter if the ears are a little bit different from one another. So I'm going to gather up through along this line to the center top. There's the first ear. I'm going to wrap around the base of the ear and secure my thread. I think that's enough. Get that one nice and tight. And then I'll go down to the opposite side from here to here. That looks good. Now I know that this is the front because when I tied off the ears, I made sure um, when I wrap them, I sort of uh, tip the edges toward the front. So this is the front. And I'm gonna add some polyester fiber fill right now. I'm gonna stuff it from the bottom and I'm gonna fill in this face area. Right now it looks like there's a lot of, you know, um, wrinkles and pleats, but I'm gonna try to work those around to the back. So the back has all the wrinkles and the pleats and the front for the face is more smooth. And I'm gonna continue stuffing all the way to the bottom. Just wanna make sure I, there's generally sort of a triangular shape here and I like that. To gather up the bottom, I'm starting 
my thread, the knot of my double strand of um, quilting thread and the same allowance on the inside. That just gives the knot something to grab onto. And I'll just go around through a single layer of fabric all the way around the circle. Now we'll create a head or a neck like this. On the back of the bunny, I'm going to do a little stitch just to secure just so when I tug, it won't pop through. And then I'll wrap kind of where I want the neck to be. That looks good. I'm going to pull it tightly. I want it extra tight because there's a certain amount of bulk when you add the sweater. And um, if I don't pull this very tightly, then there's not enough definition in the neck. That looks good. So now I'm going to secure it in the back. This won't show. Now let's add the eyes. I have five millimeter round beads. I like the ones that come on the strand like this because they are more uniform than the ones that I purchase in a package. I think they're just better quality. I'm going to just draw little indicators for the eyes. There's no real formula, just whatever you think uh, they're going to be, but remember they will be in tighter than your dots. So place your dots out a little bit further than you think. The other thing is there's the, call this like the axis through the bead. And because sometimes you see a little bit of the thread, although you can use black thread, but then you risk the thread showing through the shadow. I like to um, place the axis of the bead on a diagonal like this. So not like this and not like this, but sort of like that, if that makes sense. I will show you. So I'll secure my thread back here where everything else is and I'll come out at one of the dots, slide the bead on, and I'm going to imagine this is the bottom, so then I'm going to reinsert the needle at a diagonal, and then go across to the other dot. It doesn't have to be perfect. Even if the eyes are a little wonky, it's fine. And then I'll put this bead on, And then I'm going to go again on the diagonal, like that, and then back to the back of the neck. I'll pull it tightly, and I should already have a bunny with a lot of personality. That looks good. So I'll secure my thread. If you don't like the way that your eyes look, just go ahead and do them over because they're kind of stuck there. <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to fix them later on. Just fix them now. And now we'll embroider the face. I like a little nose, like a triangle-shaped nose, like that. And then a little smile, like that. And I like to embroider this in pink, pink floss with two strands. Again, I'll start at the back of the neck and I'll come out right at the top corner of the nose. And I will just start at the widest point and just get a little bit smaller, sort of taper down with maybe five stitches. There's no real formula for this. Oh, you can also do, um, you know, I have like a, like a blush color. That would be pretty too. Especially on the off-white knit. 
but I just wanted something to stand out a little bit more than the blush. That looks pretty good. It's a little crooked, but it's fine. And now I'm going to do a back stitch. So I'm gonna follow the lines of the little smile. And I know it's not really a smile, <laughs> but let's just call it the smile and I'm back stitching. So I stitch ahead and then back and then stitch ahead and then back to connect the previous stitch like that. And then a little bit further and then back and a little bit further and then connect. I think I'll just do one more. And then there's one side of the mouth and then I'll start down the other side. Oops, got a little loop. There we go. Don't pull these too tightly. You want these embroidery stitches to just rest on the surface. So you start and then skip ahead and then back stitch to connect. Sometimes this is called a stem stitch. There's nothing to it really. It's kind of a uh, common sense stitch. You're just forming a line. But in order to make it shape, then you need to break it up into individual stitches. I feel like this side doesn't curl up enough, so I'm gonna give it one more stitch. <laughs> I don't know, that might be a mistake, but it's okay if it's wonky, right? Adorable. So I'm going to secure my thread in the back. Now it's very fun to add a little blush. Add a little blush to the inside of the ear. And a little more than you think that you, <laughs> that you want because it, it kind of does rub off over time. And then a little bit on the cheeks. Any color is fine. There we go. And if you want your bunny to have that sort of pitiful, pathetic, sad look, you can add some darker um, eyeshadow um, before you sew on the eye beads, and that will give like a little shadow around the eye, and that can be really cute. Okay, now we'll add whiskers. I imagine that this is a baby bunny, so I'm just making the whiskers, you know, kind of subtle, just two whiskers on each side. So I'm going to tie an overhand knot about two or three inches from the end. And I'm just going to gently stitch through. Now you can put the whiskers way out here on the cheeks or in here by the nose. And I'm going to kind of put it right here. So there's one side. And then to knot the other side, I'm just making a knot, make an overhand knot, and then place my needle right here into the fabric exactly where I came out and pull this up so that it's just kind of resting right there. That looks good. And then I'll trim this off to approximately the same length as the other side. There we go, the face is done. Cute, right? This is an old uh, beaded sweater that I got at the thrift store. <laughs> I don't know if it's wool or cashmere, but uh, I had a lot of moth holes. But you know, it's always fun to incorporate something like this into your project. I also use this for some snowman ornaments. Anyway, I cut a five inch circle from the sweater and because I was concerned about the beads and sequins, um, you know, falling off, I just added a little touch of hot glue 
everywhere that I saw an end, so right along the edges. And now I'm going to just gather up about a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the circle. Did I say this is a five inch circle? And then it's going to gather up around the neck like this. So it'll be like a little sack. I'm just going around the edge of the circle. And of course it would be, be it would be so pretty for you to use maybe like a pink cashmere sweater or uh, stripes or a pattern. You know, you can use anything you like. And you can also make the bunnies different sizes just by starting with a different size square. I feel like this is a little big for an ornament on a Christmas tree. And I was thinking of it more as something to add to an Easter basket, a very elegant Easter basket, of course. Or you could just hang it somewhere for the holiday. So I'll put him inside or her. <laughs> Pull this up nice and tight. There's a little bit of stretch to the sweater so that I'm able to sort of manipulate it. This is the look that I want, tight around the neck with the gathers right up like that. And now I'm sort of wrapping like this and I'll secure this in the back. I have lots of options to uh, finish my little bundled bunny and um, I decided to go with, with this. It's a little circle of felt that I cut out with my die cutting machine. And it is approximately two inches, two inches across. So if you wanna do something like this and you don't have a die cutting machine, you can just cut a two inch circle. I'm, I've already pulled the ears through, so that's why they look a little distorted, but I just cut two little slits. And I'm gonna pull the ears through, and this will be sort of like a little bonnet. I just decided to go with a, a spring theme Instead of going all neutrals or holiday or anything else, I just thought might as well go with the flow. It's spring, right? Let's do a little Easter bonnet. So that's just a circle that's pulled over the ears and I'm gonna spot glue it here and there, but there's no um, shaping or seaming in the bonnet. I wanted to put a flower right here. I couldn't decide, I had a lot of options but I think I'm gonna go with this lavender baker's twine around the neck to tie into a bow and to sort of coordinate with that, I'll add one of these purplish colored flowers. I actually have a couple of options. There's this one, which is nice, but I don't think it has enough of a contrast against the pink. Of course, I could always do white, I have a white but I think this darker purple one, it's very small. But I think since it has a nice contrast, I think that's the best option. Oh, and then I have these too. This ear naturally just sort of curled that way so I could see that this, this ear will be the hanging ear. <laughs> now I'm thinking this doesn't have enough contrast. What do you think? Should I go with the blue? Let's see. There's this one. This is really cute. That's nice. I think I'll do this color. It's sort of a pale greenish blue. This just looks cute. I'm gonna go with this one. Adorable. And then this is sticking up a little bit too much, so I think I might spot glue this one down on this side. I squeezed out a little bit of glue and I'm just gonna sort of push it into the glue like that, make a little, little ruffle there. That looks good. I have the gold baker's twine already on my needle. And I know that the, this particular twine is, you know, small enough to sew with, but this one is a little bit heavy to sew with. This one meaning this purple one. It's more of a string. There's my hanging loop. 
and I think I'm just going to go ahead and use this to wrap around the neck and tie a bow. I'll put the bow on this side, right there. I'll wrap it a couple of times to sort of conceal the, the edges of the gathering. I try to tuck the gathers in, but they just don't always stay. And I should have done the whiskers last. I forgot about this. They get kind of annoying. They get in everything. Let's see, I'll wrap this maybe three times. Three times. That looks good. I tied the bow and I put some overhand knots in the streamers and I like the way that looks. Here's the hanging loop, the little flower and the bonnet. Here's how it looks in the back. The whiskers are good. All right, I'm gonna clean up my table and I'll come back for a little farewell. And our little bundled bunny is complete. I also wanna show you another version. This is a little bit simpler. I just created a little sack from Calico, four by five inches, cut two, sewed it up, left it open in the top, and folded under and gathered it up around her neck. So that's a really fun way to use, you know, themed fabrics and um, make something very simple. The body does not completely fill the sack. I had to add some stuffing into the corners. But that was a fast and easy project. I also added a little bit of smudge of the dark um, eyeshadow behind the eyes. So hopefully you'll be inspired to make something like this for your spring decorations. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.